Qualcomm makes the best processors in the Android world. There's no denying that. However, the company might be really good at making these chips, it's not so good at branding them. After recently changing the name from the Snapdragon 800 series to the Snapdragon 8 Gen series, we're now getting another name change, this time to the Snapdragon 8 Elite. So what's up with this name change anyway? In 2023, Qualcomm launched the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Naturally, we assumed that in 2024, it would launch the Snapdragon 8 Gen 4. However, earlier this year, Qualcomm launched the Snapdragon X Elite and Snapdragon X Plus chipsets, which are designed for laptops. So now, Qualcomm is launching the Snapdragon 8 Elite, which matches the branding for its laptops. So this is a bit confusing, but I kind of like it. I think that the new Elite branding gets across that this is the newest top-level processor from Qualcomm, while the 8 in the branding references older Qualcomm processors that we've seen in the past, like the Snapdragon 800 series and, of course, the Snapdragon 8 Gen series. Okay, so we know that Qualcomm changed the name, but why did it feel it was necessary to do that? Well. It's very complicated and very technical, but very basically, Qualcomm has fundamentally changed the design of the CPU inside the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Elite. Previously, with other Qualcomm processors, they have had core designs provided to Qualcomm by a company called ARM. Qualcomm basically took these core designs and just threw them into its own processors. However, with the Snapdragon 8 Elite, Qualcomm has abandoned those core designs from ARM and brought in its own. So this is a fundamental change to how the processor works. And the reason that Qualcomm did this is because it felt too limited by what ARM provided as far as core designs. Qualcomm is basically throwing away the rule book and doing things all over from scratch. Because of these new custom core designs in the CPU of the Snapdragon 8 Elite, Qualcomm is making some big claims when it comes to performance. So the company has provided us some benchmarks, and I'm going to show them to you. But I want to preface this by saying that these are benchmarks that Qualcomm has done itself and then given to us. We did not independently verify these or do them ourselves. So you kind of have to take these with a grain of salt and trust that Qualcomm isn't fudging these numbers. First, here are some Geekbench 6 single core benchmarks. Notice here that the Snapdragon 8 Elite definitely pulls ahead of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 from last year. However, also note that it does not pull ahead of the iPhone 16 Pro. When it comes to single core processing, the iPhone 16 Pro is still beating the Snapdragon 8 Elite. Now, here are some Geekbench 6 multi-core benchmarks. Here, you can see that the Snapdragon 8 Elite completely obliterates the competition, including the iPhone 16 Pro, which trails way behind. Also of note is the benchmark for the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL, which falls way, way behind the Snapdragon 8 Elite. This shows that Google has a long way to go if it's ever going to compete in multi-core benchmarks. Okay, so those are the CPU benchmarks provided to us by Qualcomm, but what about the GPU? What can gamers expect as far as gains this year with the Snapdragon 8 Elite? Well, the GPU has also been fundamentally redesigned, adopting a new sliced architecture. Instead of the GPU core being one giant chunk, it is now sliced into three different sections. Supposedly, Qualcomm claims this is going to give us better frame rates for games. So first, I'm going to show you some wildlife and wildlife extreme benchmarks. And you can see that the frame rates do increase when compared to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Now, it is interesting to point out that these numbers that I'm showing you for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 are also not coming from us, but coming directly from Qualcomm's original press release for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 launch. In other words, this is an apples to apples comparison of Qualcomm's own benchmarks for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 to Qualcomm's own benchmarks for the Snapdragon 8 Elite. Either way, you can see that we have much more frames for the Snapdragon 8 Elite than we saw for last year's processor. 
Finally, I have another benchmark here, which is the Aztec Ruins benchmark, running at 1440p in both Vulcan and OpenGL. In both situations, we see the Snapdragon 8 Elite pulling way ahead of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So Qualcomm's benchmarks here show that the Snapdragon 8 Elite should be tangibly better than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And in fact, a lot of these benchmarks show that it is even better than Apple's latest. The big question now is, which phones are going to get this processor? So Qualcomm gave us a press release listing out companies that are bringing phones to the market with the Snapdragon 8 Elite. And the usual suspects are all on here, including OnePlus, Xiaomi, and a whole bunch of others. Interestingly though, Samsung is on this list, and that doesn't usually happen. In fact, we went back and looked at the announcements for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the 8 Gen 2, and Samsung wasn't on the list on those press releases, even though the Galaxy S24 and the Galaxy S23 both had Snapdragon processors. So this kind of leads credence to the rumor that Samsung might be going all in on Snapdragon with next year's Galaxy S25. Of course, Samsung being mentioned in the press release doesn't confirm that that's going to happen, but it does support that rumor. I will be here at Snapdragon Summit all week going over all the big announcements related to the Snapdragon 8 Elite and of course anything else Qualcomm wants to announce this week. I can't say for certain what's on the way, but I am very, very sure that we have some very exciting news on the way. So if you want to stay on top of all that, be sure to subscribe to our channel. But in the meantime, I will see you in the next video.